Today we're going to see the grammar explanation of the present perfect and the past simple. How to use them, the structures, and some words you can use to identify both tenses. First, we're going to start with the past simple. As you can see here in the presentation, the past simple is used for actions that began and ended in the past. Sometimes we can say when those actions happened, using words like yesterday, two months ago, on Monday, last weekend. Here you have some example sentences that you can read. We spent hours in the studio yesterday. I didn't finish my song. Did they learn lots of songs last weekend? Now, here we have the structure of the past simple. As you know, past simple verbs can be divided into two different kind of verbs. We have regular verbs and irregular verbs. The easy thing of the past simple is that you can just add ed to the regular verbs, and that way you put them in the past. If those verbs are irregular, what you have to do is go to the second column of the irregular verbs and put the past simple of, the, of those verbs. Now, when you want to do a negative in the past simple, it's even easier, because here the only thing that you have to put is the auxiliary did plus not. So the contraction of did plus not is didn't. Remember that when you use the auxiliary, you don't need to put the verb in the past anymore. The only thing that you need to do is put the verb in the infinitive. That means that you don't have to put ed, ing, or any other endings that you can think about. Only leave the verb in the way it is in the infinitive. Now, when we want to do a question in the past simple, what you have to do first is, in case that there is a wh word, in case you don't remember, wh words are what, when, where, who, which, how many, how much. So if those words are in the question, that is the first thing that you need to put. Then you have to continue using the auxiliary of the past simple, did. Then followed by the subject and the infinitive verb again. Remember, did tell us that it's past simple, so you don't need to put the verb with ed or any other endings. Now we have here the present perfect tense. The present perfect is different from the past simple because we use it for actions beginning in the past which continue up to the present. That means that some actions have a link to the present. You can use words to recognize the past, the present perfect, sorry, like just, already, yet, or ever. Here you have some example sentences. For example, we've spent hours in the recording studio and haven't met a recording yet. Have you seen those website? Here you have this structure on how to use the present perfect. Here it's easier because you only have to remember that you have to use have and has. Remember that have is for I, you, we, they, and has is only for the third person singular. That means she, he, or it. So you put the subject, then you put have or has and the participle verb. Remember that regular verbs make the participle with ed and irregular verbs, you have to go to a third column and learn them. The negative is similar to the affirmative, you only have to change for haven't or hasn't. And then after that, put the participle verb. And the interrogative, remember, you always put a wh word in case there is, then have or has, depending if the subject is third person singular or not, the subject and the participle verb. There are some words that can be related to the present perfect, for example, just, already, and ever. Those words go before the main verb. And then we have yet that goes at the end of the verb. Here in the presentation, you can read where these mm, words go in affirmatives, in questions, or in negative and questions. So please have a look at the grammar, study it well, and we'll meet at class. Bye.